All right, just to remind everyone now that the webinar has started, um, it is recording. And if we have any folks who wanted to attend from the public, they'll be in your attendees list. Excellent. Um, there we go. Uh, I'm unable to, um, to start my video. Oh, it, that's okay. Can we not? Say, there we go. Did, um, Louisa, did you log in with the link that I forwarded? I was just going to say. <laughs> oh, I guess I did. There's two of you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think by the voices, people can tell. Uh, maybe, I don't know, are you allowed, are you able to change the name that shows? Otherwise, I, or, or do you have a separate link? Otherwise, I mean, I think people can tell by our voices which one of us is which, but. Um, <laughs> you can start your videos now. I'm not sure why the other link wasn't working, but it should be good to go at this point. I'm going to hop off all. I've got another meeting to jump onto, but have a great first meeting. I'll Thanks, just re-tag on. You're, you're going to come back to us? I think she just logged out and was about Okay, to great. Hey, Zach, while I have a moment, can, can we have a, a, a time to meet about the, um, the free bikes for kids? Um, we, I had never talked to you about that. And um, sure. yeah, let's, let's, let's set that up. Great. Lisa, out with the trees in the background. That's wonderful. Well, I sit, at, I sit at a big computer screen all day long, so I figured I'd step outside for this one. I love it. I, I can see trees. It's, it's beautiful. <laughs> um, so how are, how are you doing? Yeah, you good? good. Good. Working. Uh, just had a... My mom flew up after her vaccination, so just got her on a flight home this morning and uh, had some good grandkid time and... Yeah, enjoying the spring. Beautiful. Yeah, how about you? And, and you, you said you, you have a child. How old is your child? He's four. Four. Okay, so at least you're out of the terrible twos, right? Oh, there are different levels of in, in challenging. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it's just been a hard year. So we're looking forward yeah. to some child care again. Awesome. Um, so, um, Zach, um, I... I um, I purposely didn't send out an agenda today and that's, this will be the last of me that I don't do that. And the reason for that is, is that I, I just wanted to sort of run this in a way that we all just pass baton and kind of talk about, um, you know, what we'd like to see, you know, personally and kind of just see if there's some common ground in, in, um, in the, the huge um, uh, subject of the urban canopy. And, and I, um, you know, I kind of want to just give everybody a little time to, you know, tell me and, and the others what's on their mind. Um, and, um, and then, you know, you'll, you'll get an agenda and we'll, we'll be a little more directed before that. But um, um, <clears throat> Zach, do you want to start off? Sure. Uh, you know, so I'm going to be, you know, no longer on the commission in about three months. And so I'm largely wanting to see, you know, what type of data and research gathering can be done um, so that, you know, hopefully this can continue on into to future years. Um, you know, just a piece of, you know, I don't have, I, I don't have a lot of time or energy to offer to this committee, unfortunately, but I'm, I'm going to do the best I can. Uh, yeah. But I think um, when there was a, <clears throat> when we talked about doing a dashboard for the climate action plan, uh, the urban forestry department sent us a couple of, uh, basically they listed a couple of data sets that they might have access to that, uh, that then this group could get access to that data. And then, you know, it could get tracked into future years. Uh, okay. You can hopefully see progress towards all of our goals uh, through those data sets. So that's just something that I, I'll, I'll, uh, send around uh, later uh, once I'm able to get into my email and find that. Um, just hopefully uh, hoping to, you know, do whatever we can to make sure that we have the knowledge base moving forward to hopefully um, have an impact on this issue over the, you know, medium and long term. Very good. Is part of that data have to do with the actual coverage and the, um, the, the mapping they've done? 
Let me go ahead and find it right now. I'll, I'll pull it up and I'll share. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, while you're doing that, why, Lisa, why don't you, uh, Lu, Luisa, am I saying that right? Luisa? Yep. Um, uh, why, don't you, why don't you tell us what you're on, what's on your mind? Sure. So um, this has come up a lot in the River Road Santa Clara neighborhood because of the neighborhood planning process. And the neighborhood takes great pride in our tree canopy um, because we have larger lots um, and a lot of the goal five protected riparian areas uh, winding through the neighborhood um, that uh, kind of passively protects tree tree canopy, but right. um, it, it tends to, and we've sort of mentioned this conflict with the uh, equal goal of densification and accessible and affordable housing and all these other needs. And so um, what comes up for us is sort of strategies to um, incentivize or highlight, celebrate trees on private property that um, can be used to kind of get people to see their value um, in leaving leaving them standing where we don't have legal ability to prevent them from cutting them. <laughs> um, and so, you know, right. um, you know, the heritage tree program and other models like that have come up. Um, you know, tree mapping is sometimes challenging because people don't want, I don't know, it's like a privacy thing. They don't want strangers wandering into their backyard to see their trees. Um, right. Yeah. And uh, and then there's this disconnect between what we have data for. So, you know, the mapping from the urban forestry is about tr city owned trees or trees on city property. And um, right. so there's just a real lack of information about, um, you know, I was talking about mapping. I would love to see an overlay that shows like some of the historic orchards, you know, when somebody buys a piece of property and they don't know why they have a remnant uh, walnut and, you know, remnant cherry tree on their land. And you can say, well, th this is why here's the former orchard that was in this area. And here's why there's oaks and, you know, approximate age of all these oaks are the same because they were planted in this era. And so you can kind of get people involved in the heritage of their, their property and give them more understanding of how special it is to have these, these remnant, um, trees and, and then even, you know, calculate, you can kind of do it. There's some some based on the height and the diameter of the trunk, calculate your carbon uptake of your tree um, or even the shading and cooling effect that that canopy crown would have on land to support, um, you know, passively cooling your house in the summer, all kinds of other strategies that you can kind of educate. But um, yeah, I'm super curious what information we can find and what resources there are to kind of sell, continue those things on not just a volunteer basis. Great. Um, that was music to me, what you just said. Um, and um, it, it is, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I'm just going to basically echo that that part to start there's nothing in there that i i i think we we need to uh to need to miss um you know and and um I, i'll just start off with my little my few thoughts um as a goal um i i put down the proposal and i want to make sure everybody's okay with um, um our goal is to um uh, concentrate on expanding and enhancing the quality of the um, of the urban canopy, and the quality part is something that I I think sometimes doesn't get into the discussion very often, and that has to do with raising a tree right, uh, maintaining it, um, and things like you know the, the, the obviously the pruning and the, the the things that you do to a tree to make it grow right. Um, and, um, you know, I, that, that I think is, is an important, very important piece. Um, as far as the canopy that we're looking at, I, I think that the city has done a very good job of addressing the 25% of the canopy that is theirs. And, um, and I, um, there was some concern from our committee about overlap and some things that we might, um, be, um, 
um, you know, double doubling up on. So one of the one of the important divisions I, I, I I'm going to suggest we make is that um, <clears throat> that we well we concentrate on not doing that, but also there's 75 percent of our canopy that that doesn't really have anybody really looking at it, um, and <clears throat> so. Um, you know the way the way the city addresses trees is three ways. There's um, there's the contracted planting. There's a um, um, you know there's a nonprofit. Is uh, and then there's um, um, actual city planting of trees. So those those three areas, I think there's there's um, you know bringing those in exactly into the the seventy five percent that of the canopy that that isn't under their purviews um going to be difficult and i think that is some some of the work that we can do is to um to look at um how it's different on on the private side um i loved what you said about incentivizing homeowners um property owners um to not only plant trees but to maintain their trees and um i um and i think that um you know the heritage tree piece is uh, is something that um, is 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 very dear to my heart. But I, I think that um, there it has a lot of validity validity going forward in 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 the work that we will do uh, for climate change and sustainability. Um, but also um, you know uh, the equity piece as well. And and um, you, you, we need to remember that the trees we're planting today. Are going to be the heritage trees of tomorrow, and so you know, addressing the um, you know the the equity side of it um, is <clears throat> um, is something that I, I I want to take a hard look at, but also um, just remembering that um, the heritage trees today were were planted um, you know 40, 50, 60 more years ago, so. Um, you know, it is a bit of a, a long play, but um, I, I think that's the way to look at trees and, and, and you know, going um, forward. Um, I'd like to look at um, and get more data, and I'm hoping Zach can help out on this in, you know, the, the loss of the canopy, how they're, how they're figuring that, what data they're, they're you know, they're putting out there and, um, uh, you know, what, what they're working on. Um, and um, and and I I, I believe a uh, you know uh, um, you know developing um, a um, you know uh, um, you know sort of a a longer term planting plan and 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 I think I I don't know that we're going to get too much pushback from anybody about planting trees the way we plant them what we plant. Um, things like that. I think those are, um, there's some very good people that have their eyes on that right now. And, um, but um, to, to maybe learn from them um, some things um, about how we can, um, you know, push our forwards, our, our programs forward. Um, the, um, you know, the, there's, there's some things that, um, you know, I, I I think that are important, and you've touched on a few of them. Um, Louisa is, um, uh, you know, the value of a tree, and how we actually look at a tree from you know uh, a, a value standpoint. Um, I I'd love to have a further discussion on that. Um, perhaps um, maybe work with the urb, urban far, forestry folks and 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 actually. Uh, getting in some sort of a, a workable, tangible formula down where we actually do value that tree and we actually do, um, you know, get um, um, uh, like any infrastructure, there's, you know, um, a, a, a value to, you know, not only aesthetic, but, but also monetary. And, you know, that goes down to the benefits, the stormwater drainage, the, you um, uh, the, the canopy, the cooling, uh, and of course the carbon reduction. So um, that's a you know it's a broad it's a broad stroke, and I think probably our first challenge is is to sort of narrow it down to where we um, 
you know, where we want to, you know, pick our spots. This is literally a lifetime worth of work if we, you know, want to address everything. But um, I, 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 um, I think we've already identified one. And I, you know, like I said, it's, it's one of, it's something that I personally have a lot of experience in. You know, we, we ran a, a program um, in Hawaii that, that had international acclaim. Um, and I know a lot about that so that I can help in that. And I also wanted to bring some resources in um, to do that. But um, I think it's worth, it's also worth interesting. I mean, it's, it's interesting to note that of the, the 10 most popular cities in Oregon, Eugene and Springfield are the only two cities that don't have one. So uh, rather than sit there and, you know, stomp, stomp our feet up and down the mat, I think it's actually an opportunity to um, maybe learn from the other, other, other uh, programs that are out there, but also put, put out something that is, um, you know, maybe trend setting, maybe we can take sort of an average of things that are working and not working and, um, you know, go from, you know, worst to first and on that. And I, I think that's, um, you know, that's a lofty goal, but I, I, um, I, I don't want to lose sight of it from the beginning anyway. Um, so, so Zach, I'm sorry, I'm, that, I'm, sorry, that cut ahead. out just a teeny bit. The end you were talking about is that Eugene and Springfield were the only cities in major cities in Oregon that don't have a heritage tree program. That's correct. I, no, the, of the major ones. Yeah. So the, the 10 most populous, those two are the only ones that don't have one. And, and so how does that interact or how does how does the tree city designation um which eugene received probably i don't know 15 years ago and yeah. i thought that was a you know that that a certain portion of the tree canopy uh you know or the city was tree canopy and i'm wondering like are we at risk of losing our tree city designation if we actually yeah. are dropping our our total canopy I'm that's an excellent excellent um, area to, to discuss. I, I know that in, and I, it, and that's a good thing to go back. And I think for the next meeting, if we can read up on, you know, Tree City USA, one thing I do know that we're not doing that, you know, could potentially put us in danger of losing that is um, they, they're, they mandate a tree commission. Um, oh. And I, you know, and they, we don't have one. Yeah. Um, and I know there's some, you know, I, I, I get the feeling there's some, um, uh, you know, there's some, uh, in, you know, uh, people out there that, that, you know, think that that might be a good idea. Um, could it be tied in with the heritage tree idea? Possibly. I don't know. But, but um, that's, I, I think that's a valuable piece. And I, and I know why they're asking for that because, you know, it, it's, um, you know, it, it's, it's where we, you know, decide what we're going to do with the trees, I guess. And, and, and there's, uh, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that, you know, that we can make a running list when we do get a chance to talk to urban forestry about this, um, that, you know, we can, we can address that as well. Um, as long as the, the other one, we, we do not want to lose the Tree City USA designation. Um, for a lot of reasons, um, uh, uh, but, you know, and one of them being monetary, but um, the other one is, is that it, it adds to our universal and global um, uh, conversation that I think that, that you know, if, if, if we do nothing else within this committee, we, we help move that conversation forward. And, and that, that's, um, and so uh, um, that, that's, that is um, the type of thing I think that, that is essential. And I, and I don't think there'll be much pushback about that. There isn't, it's just, um, you know, it's always economic. It's like, well, would you rather have a tree here or, you know, a building that houses 50 people? And, um, and, and the cost of maintenance, you know, like you were saying, there's, they're not to, to properly maintain. I mean, I know that street trees have much higher costs for maintenance because of their vulnerability to impact traffic and safety and all the things. Um, but I'd be super curious, uh, first, how I, I didn't quite get a clear answer from the forestry folks, how they even calculate uh, city. And I was because um, 
you know, so much of our neighborhoods are in the urban growth boundary, but not in the city. And so um, there's all these overlapping jurisdictional questions around who's what and where. But, you know, as the climate action plan for the city of Eugene is progressing, and that is encompassing what's in the urban growth boundary as if that's the city and that makes sense, that how could calculating and, and providing you know, validity to the canopy as it is would meet some of the goals that we have within the climate action plan if we could provide a hard number that says right. our tree, you know, uh, and they probably ballparked at what the tree canopy does in terms of the, you know, carbon um, uptake, but um, stormwater services and all those things, um, how does, how does putting that in the climate action plan is we have to maintain our tree canopy in order to achieve these other goals. Is that a way to get the financial part right. of it sort of um, embedded as, as just as important as other goals that we set or other, you know, things we put money behind? Yeah, um, and the, the, I, I, I don't want this to be a completely monetary discussion, but that is, um, you know, it's, it's really good um, to keep at the forefront because it does, you know, it, it sort of runs everything. But, um, and, and back to the, the, the quality of the, of the, uh, the, the canopy, um, there's a certain, um, and there's data out there, and I, and I will bring this to, the, to, to our committee, there's data that you need about 20 years out of a tree. I mean, it's got to be 20, 20 years, um, you know, or more before it even starts to pay us back. Mm -hmm. So that that is um you know and i i think you know uh, i i i don't believe that um you know you can do it you can do it exactly you know all trees are different they have be different benefits different sizes they they do different things but um i think an overall average of you know what it does cost to maintain and i think that information is available but um but further um how we do value that tree and, 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 and at what point does it become eligible to be a heritage tree? And, and I think a good cutoff is, is you know, at least it's got to qualify for being on the beneficial side as opposed to, you know, the maintenance and the pruning and the, you know, all the things you got to do to get that tree to that, that side, um, to get it, um, um, you know, kind of to a point where, where um, it's, it's, it's you know they all help us but it's really truly giving us benefits is um i, I think that's uh that's a great discussion to have and it it will help people I, I think you know uh you know bridge the disconnect like okay trees they're just everywhere taken for granted but but when trees um actually start to work for us and we we do maybe do a little better job of quantifying what they do and and you know if we have to assign a value to them we will you know um so that's um you know that's uh those are all things that are um you know i i think you know important for our for our discussion going forward uh, zach can i jump in one of these these points you put in are based on the city's owned trees Uh, these are data sets that my understanding is that they already sort of track. Uh, yeah, so I, I would think it's city, it's city owned trees. Uh, I think the annual urban tree can percentage. Is actually... Sorry, sorry, what? I think the first one is based on GIS data that covers the whole city. Uh, but in terms of the trees planted annually and removed and pruned, I think that's all about what the city is doing. Mm -hmm. um, and then the very last one is about their interaction with uh, uh, tree adopters that, mm -hmm. they, that they give away trees to. Because that, I mean, I wish, I don't know that they could have done this, but um, having a map of where those trees ended up, the Sequoia program, you know, I wonder if they actually took addresses of, I'm going to take these trees home and plant them at this place and to see that distribution. Um, and which brings, you know, which would be cool, but also brings up sort of the other side of the equity piece, which is that universal truism is that poor neighborhoods have fewer trees um, and therefore don't have all the benefits of the trees. Um, and you can kind of map 
any city based on the area with has the, the least tree cover is going to be that lower socioeconomic neighborhood where they also suffer higher pollution rates and you know other associated challenges and how and so I would love to see if or if Friends of Trees, who's done a lot of work in those neighborhoods, Bethel, Trainsong, um, has maps uh, that they would share about you know their tree plantings and their varieties and their age and and the work that they're doing. Is that something that they track? Do you know? Um, I I I'm pretty sure that um, that they report. Um, and I should know this. I sit on their board, but I I don't. Um, but uh, but I, I this is my belief is that they do report. Um, you know, it's in a spreadsheet form, but it goes straight into the city's data. So I I do believe that there that that's um, that is being recorded and can be called back up. Nice. Um, and it's it's a it's a great thing to start with. I think you know. Um, um, and by the way, Zach, thanks for those those data points. That's uh, you know that's that's super helpful. Because I know um, that one of the GIS layers on the city's mapping, you know, Arc ArcGIS program is this is the trees, but it's just mm -hmm. the city-owned trees. And so where I keep coming back to is how can we uh, add privately owned trees either either through the heritage tree program or a layer of yeah, or a layer of the, you know, trees that are not necessarily on public right of way or city owned land, because I know that the nice thing about Friends of Trees is that they bleed into regional um, jurisdictions. Right. So the city doesn't own the, the clear zone next to the North Express, uh, Northwest Expressway. Right. But it's in the urban, it's within the urban growth boundary of the city. And so the Friends of Trees has the ability to plant there but that should be included in that larger mapping and tracking of, you know, what trees are we growing and, and you know, who's supporting them and, and all of that. Um, right. I, I, can, to that. I think I can get that data pretty easily. And I, I, it's definitely on my list um, and a great um, uh, mapping, I think has to, at least we have to, as a committee, have to uh, gain a, a really good understanding of what we have and, and that may be, the time we ask for our staff time is to um, to have that you know shared with us, um, you know, and you know, and that that's um, um, and just to, a little bit further on the mapping, um, one of the things that um, I'll break in. that um, go go ahead. Go ahead. No, I well, I just want to say I shared there's a there's a Eugene tree map uh, on their right. website. Uh, which is, I think, has to do with all the trees they've either given away or planted, and there's a little flag uh, everywhere where they've done it, it looks like. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, Good. But yes, I would expect that urban forestry has even more detailed data than what yeah. they, uh, in terms of forestry cover on, on, on pr pr uh, uh, private as well as public land, because I think this is largely around you know, public land, and then maybe some of the the donations onto private land. Yeah, it it would make sense that if they're saying we have you know twenty three percent canopy coverage, that they're looking at all the trees and they're mapping all the trees. That would, it would make sense to me that that's and I and I you know I, I'm pretty sure they are. Um, I, I want to say a little bit more about mapping though. I I see a potential for not only funding but for. Um, uh, almost a um, uh, an eco tourism type of um, interactive map that um, you know um, there may be a designation with inherited trees where there's champion trees or something where we can actually um, uh, make a um, you know if somebody wants to follow a self guided map um, to these trees to pr appreciate them. Um, something we did in, you know, in my other program was um, we, uh, we have an interactive map, but they're able to, um, er, people are able to put in their own tree stories. And, and that, um, that turned into something amazing. And, and it, it is, uh, uh, so in other words, uh, the, the grandfather that finds the tree that he had his first kiss under 75 years ago um, writes that story. So 
um, and and collecting the the history and like you say the heritage of of the trees um, is um, not only close to my heart but I think it's going to be you know uh, have some value later on you know and and it's like any history we'll lose it if we don't have it but this is a difficult history to um, some of it anyway uh, there are people that like you say the historic orchards and things like that those are you know, those are a little easier to find, but especially the individual trees and, and some of the stories, um, you know, that's down the road. I think it may be out of our purview for this, um, you know, for this particular effort. But, um, but I see a great value in that. People like visuals. And, you know, when you say canopy to, to um, you know, the average person, um, I, I don't know what they think. It's sort of like, you know, um, I don't think they all think about the same thing. And, yeah. and, and um, a visual, uh, an accurate visual that depicts our progress, where we're going, um, is something that I think it's super valuable. And if, you know, and I apologize if there's, if that's out there, I don't know about it, I should know about it. Um, and we will know about it. So, so that's, that's, um, you know, that's data that I think it's, you know, uh, if you're going to talk about canopy, uh, uh, um, a very accurate visual, um, and one that evolves. So, you know, one that, that says, you know, uh, another thing I see with the, you know, I, I listened very intently to the urban forestry, uh, presentation was the, um, you know, the, the, uh, um, the, the the tracking of the you know I, how do you you know so we're losing one one percent a year when we break even or when we go the other side we need to have enough data or enough accurate data to to kind of quantify wow this is a win we're we're moving in the right direction and that that's something that um, I, I think it's super important. Uh, because you know you, it's kind of other otherwise if you can't track your efforts or at least communicate your efforts to the um, to the greater community, you know it's uh, um, it's difficult to um, to I, I think progress the way we probably want to. Zach, you got a question? Zach, your hands up. Are you? And then it seems like you you need to know what the the net tree plantings each year is in order to get to our 2030 goal to increase to 30% canopy. Right. Uh, right. And how much does that cost? Um, you know, I think are the sort of the key questions. Yeah. Uh, you know, from a, a larger perspective in terms of process, what, what are you thinking in terms of like data collection of, you know, should, should we be inviting uh, uh, urban forestry or friends of trees to show us some maps or to give us sets of data? Uh, and then moving out to other community groups um, and then moving on to recommendations from there or kind of how do you see this all proceeding? Yeah, I, I, I definitely, those, there's no question that um, uh, Friends of Trees will be, will be invited and I've already invited them. So um, they're more than willing to, to uh, come on and educate and give us um, uh, that part, but also the, you know, the urban forestry, I know we only have two hours and we're going to use them really, you know, gingerly, but um, uh, yeah, they, those, those are, those are two, that's a given, I, I think, uh, for our work is to have them come and, and help us, you know, collectively think this through. Um, as far as the mapping goes, I, I don't want to turn this into a whole GIS discussion, but um, I, I'm aware of um, a couple of experts um, that are outside the area that I'd like to bring in also. Uh, these are more, you know, people are looking at things in a bigger picture. Um, I, there's there's um, someone that um, um, I, I know from my, my, other, my other program that um, has actually written a, a, a um, his thesis on um, on standardizing heritage tree programs, and I'm going to share that document um, um, after this meeting with you guys, so everybody can see it. Um, it it's it's very good, and and I would like Miles to come and present that to us as well, 
and um, though there'll be a lot of overlap, but there'll be some things I think that you'll we'll all go, wow, that's we really hadn't looked at it that way, and, and that's what I'm I, I'm hoping. Um, in other process um, things, I I think there's um, there's also maybe some value in bringing in a private contractor to speak to us, um, one that works for the city. I, I particularly would would um, kind of look for to to Sperry uh, Tree Service just because they're the you know they're the kind of the um, you know the one of the leaders in town. Um, I and I do have a connection there, and I'm happy to 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 reach out to them as well. Um, but I, I have a question for both of you. Um, how much, you know, do you want a speaker every meeting or um, how do you want to, what's, what's your base case scenario on that? Well, I guess what would be helpful is to see kind of if we broke up into maybe three goals that we really had for the program, for the, for mm -hmm. the recommendations. And then if, if one of those, each speaker could speak to like, Okay. getting us to a cohesive set because what's hard is like we're limited to what recommendations we can make to city council so that's either policy direction or allocation of staff time or funds that would achieve right these goals and some of them um you know might and this is the trouble again that we have with the neighborhood plan is that you know we all have big ideas around building community and, and things. And there's stuff that the city just can't do. There's just no direct right. role for the city to play. You have to have something that's outside of that um, community development. And so, um, you know, the, oh, the, you know, what is the role of maybe sub city level organizations like community organizations to kind of take their part of the city and think about their own canopy to support it. I'm thinking about, for example, there's the Active Bethel Neighbors Group, which is specifically focusing on air quality and equity in their community. And so could could well, they're working with Friends of Trees to get more canopy and they lobbied city council for more money because there's no money. Right. right. So that's an exact example of like how do we use you know maybe maybe an example of, of partnering with them to say here's a here's a great example of improving tree canopy, addressing equity and supporting you know, neighbors acting in, in concert together to do something that's really important. It doesn't have to be necessarily a directive from city council, but listen to these neighbors and they will achieve all these other goals that you have uh, for you. Uh, if you just give them you know, trees, maybe some, you know, some funds for probably what compost and, and you know, maybe offset some water costs. I, I can't imagine that the costs are astronomical. Yeah. Um, definitely, and I, I, I like the idea of, uh, I mean, the, com the committee, the Bethel group is, is infamous and you've got to love them. They're very, they're not only successful, they're, they're, they're just really sharp people um, from what I can see. Um, but, but like your, your group out in Santa Clara and, you know, all of those, um, uh, you know, maybe something we can think about is maybe some sort of a, um, uh, an informational program for all of them. You know, we can put together something that, um, you know, that um, maybe ties them to some sort of a, a general collective goal of some kind, um, you know, that, you know, we're all working together to, to get this, but, um, you know, and these are all the things that, you know, that, you know, and none of these will be terribly new or, or revolutionary, I don't think. Um, but um, maybe that's one one thing that we could look at. Um, maybe what I'd, I'd like you guys to do is to, um, you know, I, I uh, you know, the three goals I think is is probably if I had to set a goal for this committee, it's to get those three those three areas that that you know that will turn into recommendations, um, and um, we we've, we've talked about a lot. Um, I, I think one of them, you know, I, I think Luisa and I, you know, and I know how Jack, Zach feels, but the heritage tree um, piece, I, I think is, is uh, it's, uh, I think reasonably one of those. Um, so the other two are, are sort of up for discussion. And I wonder if you guys have any really strong thoughts about um, what those might be. 
I mean, my quick reaction is around, uh, you know, there's the 30% the goal and, you know, what are the actual roadblocks to reaching that? My guess is, is that city staff actually knows what those roadblocks are. Uh, and if we can find out what those are, we can then advocate them and add another layer to, because sometimes staff can't necessarily for as strong of things as they actually think are necessary. Um, the other thing, and so how can we how can we support them in best reaching that thirty percent goal? The other would be around the equity piece of how can we how can we ensure that as we try and reach this larger canopy percentage that we're actually investing in the parts of town that have been historically disinvested in, and they specifically mentioned Bethel and Train Song as being areas that have lower canopy than the rest of the city. And so trying to focus in on what are the solutions for those areas that need the most benefit um, is something that, that comes to mind as a goal. Yeah. Okay, so sort of maybe exploring the, you know, the specific areas that we feel are underserved, right? Is, do I have that, what you just said? I would right. see that as a, as a value add of, uh, 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 to the city of, you know, not only is it about reaching our canopy percentage goal, but it's about making the city more equitable in its distribution of canopy that already exists. Right. And um, so here's the question though. So if, if, if a yeah. tree doesn't have value, real value for 20 years, where the canopy becomes something that you can see from a satellite and quantify, um, and we are in 2021, you know, there's even just stopping loss doesn't get us to 30% canopy in nine years. So, right. right. I mean, so you can't just plant giant trees. I mean, they're going to, they're going to need to grow <laughs> over time. And so, so, you know, if we cut nothing, if, if there was no tree loss for a year, for a year, how much would that increase the canopy? you know, if you were to think about like each individual tree expanding a crown just a little bit, just a little bit, um, because otherwise there's no, like the 2030 goal is just unreasonable. And therefore how, how could it be adjusted to meet, you know, if we set a goal of planting X number of trees, they won't increase the canopy until how many years out? There, right, right. There's some, some math in there that would have to be pondered by an expert. Well, and that that's um, that's definitely something that um, it, it's it's critical. Um, I, I've heard I've heard numbers of four to five thousand trees a year for twenty years to um, to to achieve. I mean, and that that's again, I'm not sure exactly uh, what's that based on, but that but I've heard that said more than once so um but yeah if, if now that might be you know just i mean uh a, a, I, I don't know how that forms into a a recommendation but it's important information to have like what you know what do we have to do there's a goal of achieving and i think zach's right i mean that that that, that that's kind of almost obvious is that to to have um uh um, you know, to, to reach our goal, what do we got to do? And, and so to reach our goal and, and, and then, you know, quantifying what we have to do. Uh, looks like we lost Alicia. Mm -hmm. um, are you no, there? No, I'm here. I just turned off my video because it was unstable. Okay. okay. Um, so that's, that's the, um, you know, I think that's, that's one of those steps to get to, but but yeah, I mean, um, we need to, you know, we need to meet our goal. And, you know, I think, you know, there's even some discussion about our goal being a little low, you know, I mean, why not 45%? I mean, I, I know it's, you know, that's, that's really aggressive and probably not feasible or realistic, but um, where did that 30% come from and, and um, how do we get there? But wouldn't it be great if we just kind of passed it up um and by you know by um you know a several pronged approach to that um so 
that that's uh, um, I, I I think that's that's uh, I mean it's it's a given and thanks for that Zach I think that's that's kind of um, you know a, a natural for this is that you know how to one of our one of our recommendations are these are the steps that we recommend um, the city take mm -hmm. um, to reach our goal and and um, and maybe emphasize that um, you know uh, the time is now to to address that mm -hmm. uh, you know with a one percent loss that's a one point since loss it compounds itself so um, you know turning that around as fast as you can um, and 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 convincing um, the powers that be that um, investing in that is investing in our city investing in a property value investing in, you know it, it, it does come back to money but um, connecting those dots I think between um, you know uh, uh, you know the value um, and then how, how how do we you know sort of you know, decide that we're going to spend this money, it's got to be based on the value of, you know, a tree. So that, that, that again, um, there's, there's formulas out there for that. I think, you know, they may need to be um, tweaked a little bit for the city of Eugene, but, um, but those are, you know, those are something, things that um, I, you know, I think that are, um, um, you know, will be super valuable. Can I ask okay. a really dumb question real quick? <laughs> There's no dumb questions. <laughs> well, it's a challenging question. Can't hear um, you. Yeah, I can't hear you. I lost your, your voice. Yeah, and cool. I was like, Louisa? Are you there? Um, I can hear you now. Yeah, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Um, so, left, so in previous research, I've done there. what is the <laughs> what is the definition of a tree? Yeah. Huh. Um, the, yeah, I don't know if they if canopy. I assume the canopy would also include like large bushes and stuff, but I have no idea. Uh, various places it's five meters so like 16 17 feet is considered a tree but you're right does canopy have to be a tree um to be counted is it just visible from a satellite greenery um and i'd be super curious to know the answer to that that's that's a great question and we will ask that question and and it and it it, it sort of that that's i i don't think there's a that's sort of a, you know, a local jurisdictional opinion. I think that that um, um, be good to know. Um, there's, you know, there's a lot of those. That's, but that's a that's a great question for for them to, um, you know, to to help us with. It it sounds to me that that we're sooner than sooner than later. I think we probably need one or maybe two more meetings to um, to really fine tune what. Um, you know what we need from um, from urban forestry, but it's such a critical. I, I think it's such a critical discussion before we do too much, because um, you know uh, I I I read everything I can about them, and um, I I'm in awe of of really who they are, three arborists, and you know the the things that the expertise in that. I've looked at a lot of cities in my life. The, this, I mean, as far as you know, what do they have for tree resources? And and um, I, I, I'm not sure there's anything like Eugene. So so to to sit down with those people and and you know to um, you know develop like okay, I know you guys are busy. You know how can we help you? You know, and that that's a um, it's a, uh, I think just that's that's the way we have to set up our you know our um, you know, our relationship and also just sort of our direction as a, as a committee is, um, you know, we're here to, to, you know, to fill in some blanks or, 
you know, or perhaps work in some areas where, you know, we all agree that are, that are valuable, but, um, you know, they don't have the bandwidth um, to do that. And you hear that a lot in the city of Eugene. Mm -hmm. uh, or run pretty lean. Yeah, well, yeah. And you, you hear it everywhere, not just Eugene, you know. Yeah, I'd, I'd be very much in ha interested in having them sooner that rather than later. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I yeah. think we need to identify what the, the information that we want from them, what do we want them to present to us, and then just what questions do we have for them. Okay. Identify um, that. I mean, I'd be, I'd be happy to have them at our very next meeting if we can identify those questions and what we want. Okay. Yeah, we're going to have to probably work offline to, to fine tune that. And um, I wanted to ask you guys um, how, uh, you know, a couple of operational things. Um, first of all, um, I uh, put in the proposal that we meet 12 times. Um, that's essentially twice a month. Um, is that possible for both of you? And I know Zach, you're, you're cutting out in June, but that's, you know, three months and we'd love to have you. And we'll, we'll utilize your, your expertise greatly uh, until then. But um, so is, it, can we pick a standing time like the, you know, um, that's that would work for everybody and also a day so we don't have to go back and forth on, you know, when to meet and everything like that? I appreciate that, Mike. I have a bit of a challenging schedule just because I do work uh, quite a lot and I have other volunteer obligations in the evenings sometimes as well. Um, and so I could definitely commit to a standing meeting um, one day a month. I, I would love, to, I found it really successful with other committees to do sort of fine tuning and development or, um, you know, as long as we're not deliberating port towards a decision, which to me is like making a recommendation. Um, I do feel like there's quite a bit of offline right. work that can be done uh, via, you know, drive or other tools that allow us to collaborate and share a document. Um, because that can help us kind of see, you know, I've learned this and you can share it, you could put that up onto the drive. And so um, I think a standing meeting per month um, is, is definitely valuable. Uh, twice a month would okay. be a little bit of a stretch. Okay, let's, let's do that. Um, let's go once a month because you're one third of the committee. So, you know, you well, I'm happy to, to do, it doesn't mean I'm just going to be <laughs> doing something once a month. I'm happy to, you know, get stuff done yeah, in between, but um, I got you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's fine. And, and that's the way I would like, you know, obviously to suggest we proceed is to, yeah, there's, there's uh, anything you do is extra. Um, so, so back to the, what, what is that day? What's the, is this day and time yeah. work? Uh, Louisa, do you want to send out some that work for you? It sounds like you might have the, the most tight schedule. Um, it's less about tight schedule and more about just respect for the caregivers for my son. So actually, um, Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday afternoons are, are pretty good for me, um, with the exception of the Wednesday of the sustainability commission, or we could meet right before the commission at 430. Cause otherwise I'm dipping into, I'm, I'm lengthening the time it takes me to go get my son from who's taking care of him. Um, if I have meetings any okay. other day of the week. So if we could do Wednesdays either, uh, so 430 or five is usually a really good time. I'm kind of closing my work day. Um, Zach, when is our standing meeting on on the, what time is it? Is it it's six or I can't remember. Five thirty. Uh, yeah, five thirty. Well, I, I would prefer to do it on a night that's not the same night as the. Yeah. Sure. I understand. So, so either two weeks before or two weeks after each meeting. Um. um okay, that's fine. I'm. Most months that'll be the same thing, except there's a couple months where there's five weeks. So. I, I, um, so. So it sounds like 5 p.m. on Wednesday night, but not the week of the commission meeting. Okay. And the that's third Wednesday of each month. Okay. And, and Wednesday, and, except the third one. Okay. Five, 5 p.m. Wednesdays, except for the third one. Um, okay. So how about the second the Wednesday? Sure. First Wednesday? Well, whatever. Uh, uh, okay, we'll go second Wednesday of every month at five o'clock. Okay, and um, what I'd well, like to suggest <laughs> is, go ahead. Are we going to meet in two weeks then, or whatever? Um, a week? I don't think we're going to meet in a week, right? 
Well, the two weeks or the second Wednesday would be the 14th of, of this month. Okay. Do you guys want to meet then or would you want to meet um, or do we not or are we just not going to meet until May? Oh, I uh, I'm meet on the 14th. Yeah, I'm good on the 14th for sure. Yeah. Um, maybe okay, so so I, I have a question to ask Zach and you know maybe Louisa, you know this. Um, ha, have um, if we set up a work environment like Drive or I, I, I would prefer Slack if, if you guys have done that or used that before. Mm -hmm. Use that. Yeah, have you used it? Yeah, I can learn. I'm not I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're probably better than me, but the um, uh, if we could try that to start with, um, I, I I actually already have a Slack space with a lot of um, um, you know some some data already in there that might might help. But um, I I think for for me anyway, um, for something like this, um, that that might that 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 would that would help me anyway um if you guys are willing to try that um i know that needs to be it, this work needs to be public and and i'll work with um the um you know sam and the others to make sure this is okay but um if you guys would agree to that um just to start with and and i've you know i can do anything too i can use teams i can use drive it doesn't really you know it it, it it's it's kind of the same, but um, just to say um, that, uh, just to say that Drive has worked for other committees where we're allow we're able to set that up as uh, viewable by the public, so that they oh, can, okay they can go and go. view whatever documents that we add. Um, okay, that makes it all really easy and transparent, and we don't have to worry about. Then let, then that's fine. Yeah, you know, so, decision. Do you can that? you not can you not do that with Slack? Um. You can, but I'm just looking to standardize. And I, you know, if I deviating is, I don't want it to be work. I, I'm very flexible and I will learn to use drive. If, if the other committees are using them, we, we should probably just stay with that um, for now. Um, and, you know, I, 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 you know, I, I don't know. Let's just do it that way because that, that, I don't want to upset the apple cart here. We want to plan um, on uh, that basically at our next meeting, then we'll come up with our list of, of questions for urban forestry and then they'll present in May. Is that what our kind of timeline is looking like? Um, yeah, that sounds good. And I'd actually like to do some work from our notes, which we, I think we, we've gotten some headway in that and maybe transcribe those notes and, and kind of just add to them and, and yes, in other words, uh, if we could work before the 14th to kind of get, um, you know, uh, get that get that thing forged out a little bit, and then run it down and 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 um, and this you know decide on the 14th what those you know what those are. Okay. Um, sure. And yeah, then... I have some notes too, Mike. I'd be happy to share. Or if you um, okay. often committees nominate sort of a secretary, not the chair, to sort of put to, to maintain the notes, just to have kind of a running tally of the conversation. Um, if you could do that, I mean, that is definitely not my expertise. So, sure. um, and you, you sound like you're really detailed oriented and that would, that would work out great for me and I hugely appreciate it. Yeah, sure. Um, okay, so <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna. Uh, also, we need to not, we, I think technically we need to uh, nominate and select a chair. So I would nominate Mike to be the chair. Second. <laughs> Yeah, and I think we can just do that by acclamation, and then Louisa, if you're you're happy, to step up. For okay, yeah, I'll be secretary. That's fine. And then if we um, and when we get to the place where we um, just really quick, so that the committee doesn't stall out, Zach, when you cycle off the commission, um, could we either pull in a commissioner who's not rotating out or at the first meeting of the new commission recruit somebody without causing too much uh, yeah i mean delay? i think so i guess technically uh you don't actually have to have three people to have a committee the maximum is six but there isn't actually a minimum in our oh, go team uh, yeah. it's sort of a working agreement that we would try to have three but it's not actually a, a rule um, okay 
so uh, what I would say is that my, my hope is that, is that of the four new commissioners that come on in uh, June, you know, in July, I guess, will be their first meeting, is that, you know, one or more of them will be interested in this subject, sure. and can look back at, um, you know, the presentations that the group has gotten, and, uh, or these conversations that have had, if they want to <laughs> go all the way back to right. the beginning, um, and kind of get themselves up to speed uh, with uh, what's going on, and, and move forward from there, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that's fine, um, and um, Luis, I, I think just to, you know, to follow the protocol, um, we can divide our, our, you know, our kind of work up that way. And, but I think your official title is co-chair. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> because I mean, that's, that's kind of the way they have it set up. There's no, I don't think. Official note taker doesn't make it, if, make it into the uh, if important you, tasks. Uh, I think technically there's a chair and a vice chair. So if you'd like to be the vice chair, that would yeah. be. Vice chair. Okay. Vice chair. Um, sure. So okay. how about I, I'll go ahead and start a, a, a drive a folder for us and I'll share that with you. Okay. Um, it sometimes is a bit annoying if you don't have a, a Gmail account and it sounds oh, like you don't, you do. Oh, totally. Yeah. Oh, then it'll yeah. be easy as pie. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. send you my, 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 um, address is it not um, the email you typically use for commission uh, work? The other. No. Okay. No. So that um, does expose uh, you just a um, tiny bit to access, you know, in the event of I don't even know what that they would be able to subpoena your entire email account. So uh, they do recommend okay. that you have a different email specifically yeah. for commission work. Then, then what I'll do is I'll set that. Well, um, yeah, I haven't really done that. So I, 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 it's, I'm still fairly new, so there's not a big trail. Um, so I, I'll set up a, a specific, that will take some changing on, on the staff, but um, that's, that's a good thought if, um, you know, uh, to use the, um, I, I, yeah. I'll I'll set up a, an account just okay. directly for for okay. this. So Louisa, and, and that's uh, if you could just share that folder with uh, so, uh, Samantha as well when you create it that way she has it automatically. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, yeah. So I'll just wait, Mike, till you send me uh, an account link that you'd like to use. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'll have it to, I'll have it to you by this evening. Zach, is your commission email a Gmail account? I just have the one Gmail account and you can use it. And I can use it super. Okay. I'm up to four. So, you know, everyone's got their own different thing. <laughs> I uh, had a business one also yeah. and had an election one, but yeah, right now I'm just using the main, just the main ones. Okay. Uh, yeah. So share that out and I'll create a folder that we can share and share it with Samantha. And then we can start dropping in the notes we took today and start kind of organizing around our questions that we want to pull in for urban forestry. And maybe we can fine tune that together on the 14th. Groovy. Excellent. Great. All right. Well, thanks well, that, for pulling that, us together, um, Mike. Yeah, that that's you guys. Yeah. Well, thanks for, thanks for coming and, um, you know, really appreciate um, both you guys and um, let's do some good work together. Okay. Appreciate it. Have a good afternoon. Right. See you later. Bye-bye. Those weeds won't get around those rocks, huh? Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, they have to do that.
Yeah. You know what, I'm going to go watch the five o'clock.
targeting those households who wouldn't qualify for uh, typical affordable housing, which is at 60% AMI or less, but then also want to live in the, in the urban core. I mean, the size is so difficult. So the city is looking for feedback from the community on the developments on the Engage UG website. Comments collected through the ninth of this month will be presented to the city council when they talk about the development during their April 28th meeting. A police say was started as an assault investigation ended in two arrests after the suspect's mother showed up. We'll tell you what happened from there next on KZI 9 News at 5. You're watching KZI 9 News at 5, live, local, click break. Abby says thank you to all our hardworking, dedicated employees delivering fresh and hot pizzas throughout your community. Thanks to your dedication, families are enjoying contactless delivery and our legendary pizza. When your doorbell rings, it's time for Abby's. Watch KZI. Yeah, you know, KZI 9 News. 
Whiskey is brought to you by Grant's Hearing Center. Experience chocolate like you never have before. Euphoria Chocolate, now at the Fifth Street Public Market. Some light your taste buds with handcrafted small batch artisan chocolate. Made right here in Eugene using locally sourced ingredients. So come visit Euphoria Chocolates today at the Fifth Street Public Market. At Batteries Plus, we power family road trips. We power bedtime stories. We power our local hospitals. We power connections with friends. We do more than replace batteries and fix phones and tablets. We help our neighbors power their lives. How powerful is that? Right now at Wright's Home Furniture and Mattress, get a temperatic mattress with no interest for up to 60 months, plus a $300 Wright's card with your purchase. For a limited time only, at all Wright's Home Furniture and Mattress. Hi, friends, it's just to let you know that uh, no Chevy will buy your vehicle paid for or not. If you want to sell your car in front, we'll pay cash for it today. Or if you'd like to trade in the vehicle to lower your payments, we can do that too. In fact, we'll give you the highest possible trading value for your vehicle. Now that Chevy is here to help you cash your car or truck, or to lower your monthly payments. Shop at BradChevy.com. Then see us. We're open and ready to serve you. Brad's got to Chevy. More than ever, an easy place to shop. Rich. Handcrafted. Delicious. Decadent. Irresistible. Spring is here. There are dozens of ways to say Happy Easter at Euphoria Chocolate. From seasonal favorites, like chocolate bunnies and Easter eggs, to our classic chocolate chocolates. Say Happy Easter with Euphoria Chocolate. It's
Monday and Cloud Cover as we head toward next week. The best team to rain will be on Monday. Every other day, we'll be looking at very well rain team. Down in the Upaw Basin, 59 appears to be the popular number next week. We're looking at five days of the upper 50s. And then across the Cascades, a slight chance of snow shower Sunday. The best chance of snow would be on Monday. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday will be warming up a bit. Now, as we head into the valley, mid 60s expected on Saturday. What is the cool down here on Easter? Looking at 55 degrees. But then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, next week, we'll be looking for off and on showers and some sun breaks, but it doesn't look, look like any kind of heavy rain is expected through much of the next week. Pfizer says that new trial data gives us links to the how long the vaccine protection lasts and how effective it is against one highly suspicious virus. There, you want that. You're watching KZI 915 live, local, late breaking. New stuff can happen in the studio, but happens out here in your neighborhood. What about the last of the morning? KZI 9 News this morning is on the scene every day, covering more than news. Mm-hmm. 